In the previous video about this rim, we blew it up to find out how much air pressure it would hold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It turns out more than twice the amount of regular tire pressure of a car. So I consider that a success. Another thing we wanted to find out is how dangerous it actually is. So if we would put it under the car and it would blow up, then we could see if that would potentially kill us or hurt us. But unless you put your head directly against it, I think we would be fine. I promised in that video that I would reprint this and um, then we would put, put it, it under, under the car. car. But then I received a couple of comments saying that it's possible to repair ABS using solvents. And I think that makes an interesting subject to make a video about because I think that repairing large ABS parts using solvents comes with its own challenges. And we will find out in this video what kind of challenges we would face. It's also called ABS bonding or chemically welding. I'm new to this subject, so I'm looking forward to those experiments. But before I'm going to just dissolve everything, I must create a safe environment to do that. In the video in which I introduced the studio, I talked about using an extraction hood. I wanted to place it up the table over there, but then I thought the inside of that extraction hood is completely made out of plastic and it looked like ABS. I've got this steel fan and this can be placed within a tube and I'm going to mount that tube on the wall over there. <laughs> nice okay well this thing sucks these are tensile testing samples that we have used to find out the actual strength of 3d printed abs and this is the perfect material to do this experiment with normally abs is dissolved using acetone this is often used to vapor smooth ABS. But for this experiment, I'm going to use a different solvent. I'm going to use MEK or methyl ethyl ketone. The reason why I'm using this instead of acetone is because ABS dissolves better in this. This evaporates slower than acetone does. So I think that this would buy me a bit more time to glue those large ABS parts together. I already did some tests and they were quite promising. Uh, this is a bit of acetone left in this steel can. And I can just place it in here and it dissolves almost immediately. And I can just place these together. It's a weak joint right now, but it's, it's already sticking together. Um, and I've did some tests and the place where it joins is actually stronger. So it breaks on different spots it doesn't break on the weld so that looks quite promising but the problem with this is this is quite a low viscosity so I think that's difficult to apply on the rim so I'm going to make an ABS glue I'm going to figure out what's the best ratio of ABS and, um, and MEK so I will start with a 50-50 weight ratio and I've done something stupid. I should have zeroed the skill with. Oh, mom. Twenty two grams. Okay. 
22 grams of MEK. Twenty two grams, nice. MEK in here. Good ABS in here. Yep, it's already dissolving. Okay, and we'll put everything in there. So now I have a 50-50 ratio of ABS and MEK. I've closed the lid, now we'll wait for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. The stuff has been sitting here for two hours, so let's see how this looks. Okay, it looks like one soft sticky mess. <laughs> That's just like rubber. Wow. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I'll put the macro lens a bit closer. So you can see it better. <laughs> you can see that this turned out to turn into a rubber, a rubber goo. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Man, I think that if everything is dissolved, this could be the right consistency. I've sanded everything down, I added some isopropanol to degrease everything. I also added some MEK to soften that surface a bit so it would bond better. I've made a bit more and this is what it looks like. I think that the consistency is perfect. I've pressed everything together and now we have to wait. But this got me thinking. What if we're going to add those inserts using that ABS glue? So normally you would just press them in with a soldering iron. It's difficult to position them correctly and upright. But if you're going to place these inserts, if you design the holes at the outer diameter of those inserts and use this ABS glue, I think you can place them way more accurately and maybe it will even be stronger because that ABS glue might just bond better to this brass itself. There's only one way to find out. This stuff definitely looks like tar and before pressing them in I had to drill out those holes. I've pressed them in, there was more than enough room. I was able to remove this excess material and I was still able to do some minor adjustments. And that's it. This rim has cured. In the meantime, I went to form next. It was a great experience. I've seen some awesome things. I've had some wonderful chats with great people. Some of them were my Patreon supporters, Zachary and Bob. It was awesome to meet you guys. I've also met Joel. He's a great guy. I had a cool chat with him. And now I'm back. I've just returned. And um, it looks like... It looks like that I was able to turn this into one single piece again. And it also went pretty well with those inserts. And I think that this new method is working. The only thing that I would do differently, I of course drilled out those holes, but next time I will just design it. So what I would do is to design the hole as deep as the length of this insert itself, so it will just, so you can push it all the way to the bottom and you know it's flat. But apart from that, I think it was, it works great. I've got some questions about why I'm using inserts in the first place and not just put the threaded rods all the way through. I explained that in the video, but because this, this section over here is just simply too narrow to put threaded rods all the way through. And um, the only way to make this thicker is to increase the diameter of this rim. But my printer isn't big enough, so this is the maximum size. I completely maxed out that printer and this is what I'm able to print. I will put this thing back together put a tire around it with a new inner tube and then I'm going to put it under this car. Let me know in the comments what you think will 
this repair thing be able to hold the weight of this car and will we be able to do the first test drives here or will it just catastrophically fail like it did in our first attempt I have high hopes for this one but just <laughs> tell me what you think if at this moment you're still thinking what is this all about then I suggest watching this video over here and if you want to see more of these experimental videos then I recommend watching this video thanks a lot for watching and if you like this video then hit that like button I wish you a great day and see you in the next video Bye!